start a little slide share. How does that look, everyone? Can't hear anyone in Jitsi at the moment. You guys are all muted. Excellent. Hello, Hello everyone. <laughs> um, I just want to get some feedback from everyone. If uh, you guys, if you folks can all hear me okay. Someone can unmute and tell me if uh, if I'm sounding okay to you. We did a check uh, recently, a few minutes ago, and it sounded all great. Oh, excellent. Thank you, Scan. Great. Then I'm going to begin. Um, so uh, today's event. Uh, so if you're wondering why I'm staring up at the screen, uh, we're here in Cape Town at the, uh, Wicca, the the Wikimania mini event in Cape Town. And I'm here with a panel of people. I feel like I can swing my computer around briefly just to to show you show you some of the folks that are with us here today <laughs> um, and on the other side so we've got a literal round table today in addition to a digital round table um, to talk about uh, copyright on wikipedia and i've also got a, a big screen up ahead of me so i'm staring at myself the screen above i'm just going to ask if everyone can mute please um, so that I can speak. I see one person muted. Just that up. There we go. There we go. Um, welcome. Today we'll be talking about uh, copyright in uh, in Wikipedia. How to use and navigate copyright in Wikipedia. I'm going to start off this presentation. Uh, well, it's not a presentation. It's a roundtable discussion. Um, I'm going to start us off today with a brief outline of uh, copyright regulations in Wikipedia, how to navigate those, um, what some of these issues are, and then I'm going to um, give as much time as possible for some Q&A. Um, hopefully we'll have some some legal experts, uh, well we've got at least one uh, copyright I'm legal expert. <laughs> with us here today who can help answer these questions, uh, any questions you might have about how to navigate copyright uh, whilst editing Wikipedia, which is today's subject. So without uh, further ado, uh, let's begin. Um, so I, I've chosen to divide up the major copyright issues affecting editing Wikipedia into basically four large categories. Um, really, the biggest one is how to navigate using multimedia, photographs, videos, etc. Because um, all the other ones kind of fall under that anyway. But for simplicity, um, I've started us off, I wanted to start off the discussion with uh, talking about choosing a license. Um, that's typically the first point of entry for most people uh, when they engage with copyrighted material on Wikipedia, they're uploading their own uh, their own creations, their own works of creativity, their own works of novelty on, on, onto Wikipedia. And when they do that, they have to select a, um, a copyright license. And uh, I'll talk about the copyright licenses just now. Uh, I'll follow that up with a discussion about um, photographs. The biggest uh, topic here when it comes to photographs is the issue around Pina Panorama. Um, but there are a lot of uh, more practical issues. Freedom Panorama is quite a very specific issue. In case you're wondering, Freedom Panorama is the right to take works of public artworks. So these most often include um, uh, the facades of buildings and um, 
and uploading those to Wikipedia to, to use as illustrations to illustrate uh, architectural features or notable buildings. Um, so that's been a panorama, but we'll also quickly talk about um, uh, the, the, the contextuality of when you get um, copyright exemption for using which types of photographs. And that uh, leads us quite neatly into the next topic, which is copyright expiration. Uh, not, copyright doesn't last forever, thankfully, but the length of, of how long it lasts for differs from country to country. And we'll end off with the uh, tricky issue uh, of fair use, which is actually much trickier than many people think it is because uh, not everyone uses fair use. Cool. So um, when selecting a Creative Commons license, um, as you know, uh, Wikimedia Commons will only accept uh, multimedia or works, uh, creative works that are uploaded with a creative with a, a, um, a public license or Creative Commons license. Um, but Commons and Wikipedia um, cannot accept any Creative Commons license. There are basically only three that uh, Commons will accept. There are complicated reasons for for why there are only three of the um, of the nine Creative Commons licenses available that uh, uh, Commons accepts. Um, one of the more frustrating ones for me as an editor based in South Africa is that uh, we don't accept um, non-commercial uh, licenses. Um, and that's largely because a lot of uh, South African institutions, especially government institutions, release do release content under a Creative Commons license, but under a non-commercial license, which means that essentially we, we can't use those. And it's quite a struggle to convince the government, uh, government entities and public entities to switch from non-commercial to a more widely accepted license, such as share and share alike attribution, full text, or just basically just dropping them the non-attribution license. Um, in terms of copyright terms around the world, I mentioned briefly how not everyone has the same length of term. Um, in, Back in back in days of yore, many years ago, um, I believe it was before before WIPO, um, the typical length was about twenty or thirty years. I'm talking very long time ago now, um, and more recently in the past, I think uh, Tobias, you can fill me in here. Is it like uh, fifty or forty years? Is it the seventies or sixties when they decided to extend uh, by treaty, extend license copyright licenses around the world? Um, and so in South Africa. 1880, was it fifth? But the, uh, back, I thought it was in those days. Was it was that when they set it to 50 years? Okay, so it's actually we are much longer than I thought. <laughs> um, but in South Africa, we got 50 years plus life of the author. Many other countries, you see the darker orange ones, those are 70 years, uh, some are 60 years. Um, I know Mexico is colored in that darker color, which indicates 100 years. Um, I thought this map might be out of date, or maybe it's current, I'm not 100% sure, but um, my understanding was that Japan also had a 100-year plus life of the author a copyright limitation, but please check me on that. Somalia? So, uh, so Somalia, is good. that's uh, 30 years, I think. Uh, that's very young. I, I don't know why they got such a, a short uh, a length, length of, of copyright. Um, validity before expiration but the the long and the short of this is is that um if the copyright in the country in which the creative work was made um is is older than the date of expiration like let's say united states i think it's 70 years plus life the author there then um it's you you're free to upload it um the united states it's actually quite easy to follow because they they have a a, 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 um, a a special day every year, first of January. Wikipedia celebrates first of January as this very special special day in the year when copyrighted material from the term limit enters the public domain. And so, so it's every year now, sort of more and more material, especially from the nineteen twenties, is now entering into public domain. I don't want to spend too much time on this because I want to sort of give us as much time as possible for Q&A. Uh, Freedom Panorama, I already briefly explained what that is. Um, this is just a map of countries where Freedom Panorama exists. Freedom Panorama is something... <laughs> <that we want. laughs> 
Yeah. I'm just going to continue going. Uh, so free panorama is something we generally want because it uh, it gives us the right to take photographs mm-hmm. of public works, um, use them on Wikipedia for illustrative purposes um, under a Creative Commons license. We don't have to ask for permission and uh, go through the logistics difficulties of making that happen um as you can see a lot of countries in the world don't allow for freedom of panorama this is so uh, increasingly more and more countries are allowing for it i'm just going to ask if everyone can please uh, mute themselves until we begin the q a thank you um some countries you'll notice uh allow for freedom of panorama in external areas only so out in the open only whereas other countries have a more uh, a broader freedom of panorama uh, copyright exception, which allow for photographs of interior spaces that are also public spaces. So think of train stations, for example, um, that are also covered by the freedom of panorama copyright exception. And then uh, a brief update on what has been done in the Wikipedia community uh, globally to try and make copyright law uh, friendlier to Wikipedia and Wikipedia editing. Um, I know there, I know of advocacy efforts in Australia, European Union, uh, South Africa. I know the best because I'm involved in that. The United States and in the World Intellectual Property Organization efforts to try and get membership there. And I can go into detail on any of those if you are interested in. Um, but I'm also happy to open us up to questions on any of the other issues we addressed. And hopefully, um, we also have a legal representative from the Wikimedia Foundation uh, joining us here today to also help answer the questions in a more expert fashion than myself. Thank you. Any questions? Let me open up the floor here. No problem. I'm going to stop screen sharing. Let's see here. Uh, Yes, I just missed it. Uh, Okay. What do the colors on the map mean? Um, Butch asks. So let me quickly go back to that map. Um, So there are two maps, uh, Butch. Um, The first map, uh, this one here, uh, the the colors, so the yellows basically mean 50 years plus life of the author is the extent to which copyright will last in that country. So if your country is in yellow, that's 50 years plus life of the author. Um, So basically after the death of the author, add another 50 years, copyright is now expired. And therefore, it is in the public domain. You're free to use it. If it's in orange, um, it's 70 years, if I remember correctly. And then for some reason, the author of this map decided to color brown as uh, 60 years. So I think uh, Venezuela is colored there in brown. So that should be 60 years plus life of the author. And then the very dark color, which I believe Mexico is colored in, is 100 years plus life of the author. And um, Ian, in the room here with me today, he asked about Somalia, which is colored in green. And if I remember correctly, that is 30 years plus life of the author. Most countries in the world um, seem to be adopt, seem to have adopted the 70 years plus life of the author uh, copyright limitation. The second map, um, red, on, so this is the map of Freedom of Panorama, where it exists and where it doesn't exist, and the extent to which Freedom of Panorama grants the copyright exception. Um, red indicates no freedom panorama. So South Africa, where I'm in, doesn't have freedom panorama. Philippines, for example, does not have freedom panorama. Um, uh, although South Africa, we were uncertain for a while uh, about whether or not we did have freedom panorama or not. We, we came to the conclusion that South Africa doesn't because the copyright law of 1978 is badly written. Um, so but our reading of it, much like in Sweden previously, is that really we don't. So we sort of err on the side of caution. Um, whereas uh, many countries in the European Union um, do have been a panorama, including uh, North America, the Americas as well. Let's see if there are any other questions. Let's see. 
Oh, that's great. Thanks, Butch. Yeah, so Butch is just saying that there are bills filed in the Philippines um, to include a Freedom Panorama exception. Oh, it's so uh, so Venezuela is indeed 60 years. Sorry? If you look at the Labour comments. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. Oh, thanks, uh, thanks, thanks, Gan. Um, Oh, I'm sorry about my line. Um, let me know if you missed anything and I'll repeat it. My line might not be 100%. Um, please let me know if you've got any other copyright related questions. I am happy to also to go into some detail about the advocacy efforts as well as into in any of the more uh, particular questions. I do quickly want to go into um, one thing in that um, Creative Commons, the Wikimedia Commons has got a, a, a pretty good article on um, how and when you can use photographs, uh, particularly photographs on Commons and upload them to Commons, uh, because there's a lot of contextuality when it comes to using, um, uh, figuring out if, if, a, if um, a work is copyright exempt, especially in, in Wikipedia. Wikipedia, we tend to take the strictest possible interpretation of copyright law in your local country. Um, so that does limit us a lot. But there are certain notable exceptions. Um, some of my more favorite exceptions are um, if it is a, um, a faithful reproduction of the original work. So uh, if, for example, you take a photograph of a copyright uh, expired or exempt um, work, let's say a, a painting, an, an old painting, um, where the copyright might have expired 100 years ago, and the, pic, the photograph has no artistic merit, it is simply a faithful reproduction of that painting, the copyright would not apply to that, because copyright has to, has to have some... Um, uh, novelty or creative input into it to qualify for copyright. That is interesting enough. That is why data cannot be copyrighted. Data is not covered by copyright law. Because there's no novelty, there's no creativity in, in data. Data is a reflection of fact. So uh, I know that there was a debate a while ago about whether, um, and it keeps on seem, seeming to crop up whether data is covered by copyright. It, it is not. It's, it's covered by other areas of law. Um, so yeah, I would, in terms of the copyright exceptions for use in Wikipedia, I would suggest checking out the uh, copyright rules uh, by subject matter on Commons. It is, it is a, a pretty complete article. And there's a similar, um, choosing a copyright license is another page I would also recommend. Oh, yes, let me actually do that. Uh, I'll share the links with you all now. And then it so gives you a little bit of extra time to ask me some questions. Um, copyright violations. Is there any, okay, so what about copyright? Um, someone's asking in the chat, what about copyright violations? Uh, that is, uh, people are misusing content for Wikimedia Project. Are there any plans to enforce? force Wikimedia Commons, etc. license. Um, so on Wikipedia, um, if some, so I'll first start, off the, first start off with this. Wikipedia tends to use, as, as most of us know, Wikipedia tends to use um, images based on Wikimedia Commons um, to dis, for display on Wikipedia. Um, and in order to get images onto Commons, they have to be um, they have to be uh, under Creative Commons license that is uh, compatible with Wikimedia Commons, um, or they have to have no copyright connected to them, like the copyright is expired. Right? Um, there are exceptions to this, um, and that's the fair use exception, which I actually haven't talked yet about uh, very much about. And if you want to use something under that is covered, like if you want to use something that has copyright on it, the only way around it in Wikipedia is um, uploading it to Wikipedia itself and under a fair use justification. 
And the fair use justification is necessarily quite strict. Um, it basically says, and, and we, we tend to revert to American law. Uh, there's a, a, a quick disclaimer here in that um, not every country uses fair use. Um, America largely invented the term, um, and more and more countries are now adopting it. Fair use is quite a flexible um, philosophy, um, illegal legal philosophy, legal concept, which differs from the uh, copyright regimes that other countries choose, choose to use. So just because something might have a fair use justification in the United States doesn't always mean that you can use it um, on Wikipedia. Um, so, for example, in South Africa, where I'm based, we got fair dealing, which is slightly different from fair use. It's actually considerably different. Um, a fair dealing basically says there's a list of exceptions, copyright exceptions, um, and if you are if you're using the copyright material that's uh, listed on this list of exceptions, uh, then you're fine. You 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 can use this material for for basically the public good. Um, if it's not on this list of exceptions, I'm sorry, you can't use it. Uh, full copyright mm. is, is applicable. Um, most people don't seem to be aware of this on Wikipedia. Most people seem to just revert to fair use automatically, and that's because copyright is complicated. Um, yes, uh, okay, I'll, I'll get to that question just now. Um, but uh, there are also other regimes. I know that civil law treats it a bit differently. Uh, I'm not that familiar with how civil law treats copyright exceptions. Um, my my understanding is it's somewhat similar to the list system that fair dealing is based on. Is that yeah, it's, yeah. So so it's 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 concrete lists, um, much like much like fair dealing. Uh, the advantage of fair use, and this is why we like fair use so much. Other than we already adopt it, and we already treat it. It's probably a bit incorrectly, but we really treat it as a kind of a universal catch-all and exception uh, because our servers are based in America. Um, the advantage of fair, fair use is that it's flexible. Um, it's not based on the static list. And so that makes the, um, the law essentially future-proof. I mean, like the example I like to give is that um, an entity like Google couldn't exist in, in, in a country that has a fair dealing or, or civil civil law copyright exemption system, a uh, list based system, because it, there's no way for the legislators to have foreseen the use of mat copyrighted material in the way that Google uses it for what you, what they would argue is a public benefit case, right? Um, and so, so when Google got started, they were sort of taken to court in copyright copyright violation terms. America, the American court system found that actually. Um, uh, that was not a viol the way that Google was using copyrighted material wasn't a violation of of, co of copyright um, uh, due to the way fair fair use works, and so Google could exist. Uh, now that's not really relevant to us as Wikipedia editors, but it is a nice little example as to how future proofing works and how flexible the fair use system is, which is sort of a bit of a better fit for us. But I think there are other other folks, ah, Jacob, yes, Jake, Jacob is is a better a better person to answer to sort of fill us in on on those kind of details than I am. Um, yes, that's right, Jacob. Yeah, some countries have fair dealing, which is far more limited than fair use. Um, Australia, I'm just going to answer uh, cover one more question. Um, in saying freedom of panorama, you are basing that on the uh, Sorry, it's cut off there. Uh, Australia doesn't use the language of freedom panorama, but does have some provisions which are similar. You should think we haven't, but sometimes this is disputed, which can be frustrating to our editors. Yeah, I can see that that happens a lot in law where um, a legal concept does actually exist, but it's not coined the same way it is in, in other parts of the world, thereby creating confusion. And so you need, you do often need someone to read the law um, to answer, to give you a clear legal opinion about whether or not a copyright um, exemption exists um, that you know you might not be aware of in a certain country. Um, Jacob, I want to know. Uh, I want to open up the floor to you and get any feedback from you on any of these questions and what I've said. 
correct me where I'm wrong, fill me in where I've left blanks, um, in, in any aspects like that. Oh, okay, okay. You can't you can't go in the speaking version. That's unfortunate. Sorry about that. Um, I could try and unmute you. Ask to unmute. Okay. Um, in the meantime, are there any other questions on this issue of copyright? Because it's it's very complicated term. I'm just going to add the one more link that I've got to add. It's a very complicated field of law. Um, I'm not a legal expert. I've just sort of spent a lot of time um, work uh, advocating for uh, copyright reform, uh, especially in South Africa. Um, but like I said, I'm not a legal expert. Uh, there are legal experts in this room uh, who are encouraged to correct me and fill me in where I am I am wrong. <laughs> um, thank you, thank you, Jacob. Yeah, please do add thoughts in the chat in the in the meantime. Um, and I'm also going to uh, uh, ask ask if anyone's got any other questions or feedback. Um, and you can you're more than welcome to unmute yourself to to join us. You mentioned that. Um more countries are adopting fair use and uh, service and activity in the Philippines, but there was a bit of backlash when South Africa started the process. So what, how is it going in different parts of the world? I also saw your map that the European Union doesn't seem to have a consistent application either of how things go in generally worldwide. Um, Do you want to repeat it for people? Sure. I don't know if everyone heard Ian's question. So Ian was asking, what is the status of copyright advocacy globally um, in different countries? Uh, European Union was, was one that, that he sort of wanted a bit of a focus on. Um, I'm better placed to talk about the situation in South Africa. I can give a brief account in the European Union, but if, if, Dim, if Dimitar is in the room, he is by far the best person to ask that question to because he, he directly deals with that. Um, um i'm gonna i'm gonna i hope you can forgive me for dodging the european union question because <laughs> i would be more comfortable if, if demi answers that um but in south africa we've made quite a lot of progress um we have managed to get freedom panorama into the copyright amendment bill which has uh, been passed by both houses of parliament mm -hmm. we've also managed to get freedom panorama in uh, to the copyright amendment bill and for the past two years now, we've been waiting well, a bit more than two years, about three years now, we've been waiting for the president of South Africa to enact the law. Uh, so the president has been sitting on the law for a long time now, which is actually a violation of the constitution. Um, and, and blind South Africa took, took the presidency to court over this issue. Um, but long story short, we've been successful, uh, but we've been frustrated in that the law hasn't been enacted. But the good news is, is that those amendments cannot simply be undone because both houses of parliament have, have passed them. Um, and there's a big to and fro uh, going on about sort of details within the law. Most of the focus tends to be on uh, fair use, fair use versus fair dealing, uh, the replacement of fair dealing with fair use. Okay, Jacob, uh, Jacob's adding some thoughts here. Um, so first, the term of freedom panorama was actually somewhat coined by the movement. Uh, you won't find it in most uh, statutes unless they're passed really recently. This is shorthand we have for various combinations that allow the right to take photography in public locations. The other thing I'd note from earlier is that many EU countries have varying terms based on the artistic quality of the work, which is totally different in the United States. That's true, actually. I I know Canada has, has got the same um, it's got the same situation. So EU countries won't have fair use exceptions, but they have works that are not artistic that enter the public domain only uh, 20 or 25 years 
leading to a wider array of available works. Oh, thank you, Alex. Thank you, Alex. That's very kind of you. Um, so Nadia asks, um, I want to ask if it's allowed to use the links to copyrighted files uploaded on the internet archive. So, um, uh, well, Internet Archive should have a section. I'm going to quickly check that. Internet Archive should have a section which lists the, the copyright of the work. Uh, my understanding of Internet Archive is that most, if not all, of the material there um, is, is in some way copyright exempt or creative commons. Um, but don't take my word for that. Check the Internet Archive. Check the uh, copyright license associated with each um, uh, use of creative work that you want to want to use, and uh, check that. And if the Internet Archive, if the copyright license on the Internet Archive, the relevant uh, Internet Archive page or uh, a piece of work is compatible with Wikipedia, um, then you can use it. You can certainly link to it. Uh, I, I know of nothing on Wikipedia that says that you can't link to copyrighted works. So, because a link is just a line of text taking you to the relevant page, to to another host, right? And it's the other host's responsibility to um, respect the copyrights of the user. Um, I'm going to say this <laughs> um, some caution. <laughs> um, yeah, there we go. It's considered distinct. Uh, so Jacob is just clarifying. Yes, linking is considered distinct and almost never violates copyright in the US. And that is my understanding of the world generally as well. Um, because that's just text, right? It's not like um, you are putting on the, the copyright onus on, onto the Wikipedia servers or Wikipedia community. So uh, Jacob goes on to explain the, you know, the European Union... Um, a couple of years ago had a case where a magazine linked to a copyright violation and they knew they were doing it and were found to have violated copyright. So that's why I hesitated <laughs> because uh, I could think of some parts of the world where linking to uh, a copyright viol material that is copyright violated can get you into trouble. Um, so linking can be complicated. Um, Wikipedia having servers based in America um, and Jacob this is where I'm going to need your expertise. Um, there is a con legal concept called safe harbor, and also Tobias, uh, if you can also help me out here, um, which means that um, if it's if it's on the Wikipedia servers, um, generally American law will apply because the servers are based in America. Uh, that's a really butchered explanation of safe harbor. Um, but it does provide some copyright protection when it comes to Wikipedia. Um, and I would appreciate some uh, ex uh, a guidance here on Safe Harbor because it's not something I... Safe Harbor would typically only protect the internet service provider, would not the actual user of, of the material. Okay, so, so Safe Harbor uh, protects the internet service provider, not the actual user. And just to clarify, would the internet service provider also include the person running the servers? Um, or does it just include the person providing the internet connection? So would, would, it, would it cover Wikipedia as well? Or would it just cover your... Ah. So, so again, that's, that's based on the definition of how a domestic service provider is defined within the country's law. Um, so Jacob has said, uh, with regards to Safe Harbor, Broadly, yes, Douglas, that is right. The foundation may get demands from a copyright owner listed in the transparency report as a DMCA request uh, that we have to grant. It includes uh, us running the servers so that the foundation is protected. Um, Mike Peel asks, I can't hear what the other person is saying. <laughs> oh, so, sorry, Mike. Yeah, that, that was Tobias. He was speaking softly. I uh, was trying to, to repeat, um, repeat him. Um, and basically, just to repeat what Tobias was saying, he was saying that um, uh, Safe Harbor only protects the internet service provider, and the definition of an internet service provider is dependent on domestic law. Um, so that differs from country to country. 
Jacob adds, uh, we don't get many DMCA demands. It's like 30 or 50 anyway, annually, and we grant less than half of that. Yes, um, uh, there are a lot of spurious copyright requests, the um, copyright takedown requests that, that uh, the foundation receives. And I also want to add that um, some of the NAT chapters received, certainly Wikimedia South Africa, we received a couple, one or two legal letters in the past, um, you know, demanding t with, with takedown demands. So far, all of them have been spurious. Um, it's mostly people engaging in copyright trolling or copyright censorship um, and using spurious grounds, uh, using spurious copyright arguments to engage in copyright censorship. So, for example, um, and this is often... So a little bit of a segue, I don't want to go too far down this path because it takes us away from copyright. Um, uh, we, we sometimes get legal demands about so defamation, for example, uh, that someone has written something on Wikipedia that's deflammatory and we demand that it be taken down. Um, all of the ones that we as a chapter have received so far have been spurious. <laughs> um, and the same is with copyright. And copyright censorship is an interesting thing. Um, which I suppose we can explore a little bit later, uh, but it does exist. It's quite similar to patent trolling in a way. Uh, so Jacob adds, users who aren't in the United States should be more careful, though. An example, we've had a couple complaints where someone photographed a private house in the European Union. These photographs aren't copyright limited, and the foundation has no risk hosting them. But the photographer may be guilty of trespass locally, and could owe a fine to the property owners. That's a very good point uh, Jacob raises there. So Jacob actually raises a, there, there are a couple of things in Jacob's example. Um, so the first one are the uh, privacy laws. So in South Africa, we also got quite strict privacy laws. Um, about and, and that's a different area of law. It doesn't cover copyright, but you can be hit on sort of privacy law issues when photographing houses, for example. Um there's also um, uh, freedom panorama issues, which he touched on there briefly as well. Um, and uh, there's, there's different, there was one other one that just suddenly slipped my mind um, in Jacob's example about photographing houses. Um, but the point, the moral of the story is uh, when it comes to pho photographing in your country, um, it can be a bit of a minefield. Each country is different. Oh, yes, this was the other one. Sweden, freedom of a panorama in Sweden. So um, this is a great example of what Jacob was talking about. A couple of years ago, about, what is it, about six or seven years ago, I think, um, the Swedish chapter will be able to correct me on this, the exact date, um, case was brought against an individual in Sweden for photographing a fountain located in a public square. The fountain was owned by a museum. Uh, the photographer took the photograph, put it on commons. The museum demanded it be taken down because the, the museum was making money selling calendars with the fountain printed on it. Um, Wikimedia Sweden. Uh, so Sweden firstly has unclear or ambiguous laws regarding whether the concept of freedom panorama exists in the country or not. A uh, case was brought against um, the photographer. Sweden decided to defend the photographer and cover the legal costs and damages. Um, went to court. Uh, Wikimedia Sweden very sadly lost the case. It did, it did it, thankfully clarify the law in Sweden on this issue. Um, but it does show that in different countries, there are different, different laws around, say, photographing public works. Um, it, that was actually quite, um, I mean, it was, there was a silver lining to Sweden's loss um, in that we in Wikimedia South Africa, we could use that as an example about why we need a freedom of, a freedom of panorama exception in the law to clarify the law, because things like what happened in Sweden do happen. Um, Jacob adds, um, so scanning probability um, scanning probably doesn't do it if the org hired a photographer or actually used the camera to photograph uh, the public domain work. Their photographs, their photographer's version may be protected depending on the country. In the United States, 
Probably not. In Germany, probably yes, off the top of my head. Uh, although photos of public domain works are an example of non and non artistic photos that fall in the public <coughs> domain after 20 years in Germany. Uh, so if you have a museum catalog from a German museum in 2022, you could probably use it. Um, Mike Peel asks, I think that's an answer to my question. So changing the topic a little. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, oh, yes, I saw Mike, you asked a question before that. Uh, about scat. Uh, I'm here. Uh, sorry, I'm going to ask if everyone can please just uh, mute yourself. Thanks. Um, great. Let's see if there are any questions I have missed or answers I have missed. Um, I think that's most of everyone. Um, Advocacy. Oh, let's go up. Um, oh, 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 yes. Are there WMF materials uh, for joint advocacy on copyright? That is a great question. Um, so uh, the Wikimedia Foundation uh, does have um, a public policy office. Uh, that's that's run by, by Jan Garlich. Um Jan is the person to contact about that. Let me quickly uh, get Jan's uh, details. Uh, rather not do that quite so publicly there. <laughs> See my, my emails? <laughs> um, Jan Gerlich. I'm going to put Jan's email. Uh, I'm sure he will not mind me sharing it here so that... People can ask uh, Jan for um, uh, advocacy materials or questions around the Wikimedia Foundation's um, uh, advocacy efforts on copyright. So that's Jan Gerlach, Wikimedia Foundation Policy Head. Great. Anyone else? Any other questions? Oh, uh, oh yes, yes. Dimi has also been very active in the EU copyright reforms. Absolutely, Jacob. That's right. Um, I already mentioned uh, Dimitar once, and he is definitely worth mentioning multiple times more. Uh, Dimi is super active when it comes to European Union um, issues and copyright. Um, he is the person to ask about the advocacy efforts in that part of the world. And uh, I'm actually, I'm quite happy to also share his detail. I'm sure he won't mind that either. Um, uh, so, if, so, so Dimi is a good person to ask about the European Union stuff. Um, let me add that there. Uh, uh, for European Union. Great. Um, any other questions on copyright? It's it's a very um, it's quite a difficult thing. To, I can say from experience, copyright is quite a difficult thing to advocate um, uh, on or advocate. Well, I wouldn't say for. It's a very difficult uh, subject to, to advocate about because um, it is a notoriously complicated area of law. Like I said, I'm no legal expert. I am a lay person when it comes to legal matters. I'm just very interested in copyright and I've become very involved in advocacy in it. Um, but it is, it is fascinating when you get into it. It also has a lot of um, immediate application in Wikipedia. And the one unique thing, I could say from experience, the one unique thing about Wikipedia editors and copyright is that we are one of the few groups that consistently have very deep and detailed experience of dealing with copyright issues. Um, so we're quite unusual in the world of 
um, public benefit entities in that we are very passionate on this issue of copyright because uh, we often encounter copyright as a limitation to our ability to <clears throat> provide provide free knowledge, uh, create great Wikipedia articles. And that and that is quite a mobilizing sort of force within our movement on this one issue of, of copyright. Um, I know that uh, a lot of copyright lawyers sort of go, oh, Butch, yes, please do speak, Butch. Uh, uh, actually, this uh, forum is really uh, uh, informative and as, as well as... Uh, educational I, I hope that uh, we should not stop uh, doing this because uh, this is a uh, uh, hopefully we could have another forum probably in the next few months or uh, or weeks uh, con and continue discussing about copyright because uh, e each and every Wikimedia no uh, actually is compelled to, to know copyright because of uh, of uh, involvement in uh, commons uploading and uh, interaction with other Wikimedians. And it end up uh, other Wikimedians uh, suddenly uh, getting frustrated on uh, on uploading anymore on, on, on commons because uh, because they, they thought that uh, people are trolled by, uh, by uh, random Wikimedians on, on copyright concerns. Great, thank you, Butch. Um, that's that's great to know. <laughs> uh, how how are things going in the Philippines? Out of curiosity, I, I believe that you're quite involved in that part of the world. Yeah, actually, uh, I placed on the Etherpad uh, the the two new legislation that were passed. Actually, we're almost on the finish line when we're doing this. Uh, advocacy work actually it's not through an affiliate but purely volunteers uh jacob knows this uh, uh unfortunately we didn't uh, gone through because there was an election uh last may so we went to another set of uh congressmen again so we're back for to square one but uh we're hoping that uh, we could have some some weight uh for any community member or at least the foundation to uh, give us uh, capacity building on how to how we would do uh, lobbying uh, lobbying uh, process with uh, with uh, legislators because uh, we're not actually lawyers and uh, but uh, we're advocating for for freedom of panorama and good thing that there are already two members of Congress who filed bills to include the panorama provision uh, and uh, when uh, Actually, the Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines uh, explained to us that this provision that was added on the bill actually copied from the copyright law of Australia. <laughs> so, so I, I don't know if it is copyright per se, but it's it's at least there's a a, a good uh, good step already uh, going here. But uh, of course, it, it uh, voting in Congress is is a numbers game. So we need uh, we need more congressmen to support this bill. These two bills, actually. I place it mm -hmm. on the Etherpad. What are those two bills? Thank you, Butch. And uh, good good luck to you. I, I've also heard about the uh, the uh, advocacy efforts in Australia. Um, I know that um, in, South, excuse me, in South Africa, we also look to what's going on in Australia with quite a bit of interest, uh, sort of policymakers. Um, interestingly enough, I've also heard that the Australian policymakers are looking at South Africa and that's because uh, Australia and South Africa got very similar legal systems um, and very similar legal origins, especially when it comes to copyright law. We both got a copyright law based in British copyright law. And so reforms in one country are sort of seen as very similar to efforts to reform in another country. Like it. Uh, yeah. they'll, they'll have similar legal repercussions. Yeah. Um, Actually, for the Philippines, so we... We did it. Uh, we our copyright laws is actually uh, copied from the United States. <laughs> uh, a lot of uh, uh, la uh, landmines that we encounter when we're, we're uploading work. So, uh, good thing that there are volunteers who write to the 
in IT office in the Philippines uh, proposing changes to the law. And good thing that uh, the IP office actually in the Philippines is supporting our our advocacy efforts. It's it's up to the congressman actually to listen to us. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I I just saw uh, Mike's Mike's made a, a humorous comment. Uh, did someone forget to copyright the copyright law so they couldn't be copied? <laughs> um, believe it or not, that that is covered. <laughs> um, by yes, that's right. Actually, the law usually can't be copyrighted, <laughs> as Jacob points out, uh, which is quite quite humorous. Um, I know I know of a project in South Africa uh, that one of our, our uh, partner uh, partner organizations open up uh, worked on uh, about a year or two ago where they were digitizing all of the government gazettes um, so the government laws right what government is publishing and they were pub and they were digitizing that en masse um, and that that they, the copyright was just not something they, they needed to worry about uh, because that's exempt from, from South African law. Um, in Switzerland, there is a federal exception for copyright on law, texts, and things like minutes of meetings. Oh, interesting. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah, they, they generally, governments are not very concerned about copyright and end material. Um, South African government, interestingly enough, I can't speak for all governments, when it comes to photographs, um, is very sensitive about the com um, their content being used for commercial purposes. Um, I know that the American government and the Russian government uh, actually just release all of their, or as much of their content as possible under an open license to encourage uh, public benefit use of their material. Um, and that's that's something that we advocate for as well, certainly here in South Africa, that the South African government adopt that, a more open license so that we can start using South African government photographs on Wikipedia um, at the moment, the NC license, as I mentioned at the beginning, prevents us from doing that. So, um, wait a minute. So, uh, just got another comment here. In Switzerland, there is a federal exception. Yep, that's right. Way too many Swiss on Wikimedia Commons misuse the template for this exception to upload other works by their government. Interesting. Interesting. I, I can see that happening. Uh, Joseph adds, uh, We uh, do we have data of country that observe this law um this is copyright law i don't know of any data sort of uh, mapping um how different governments uh, regard their own copyright I, that would be a good project actually to engage in to avoid confusion um mapping differences in copyright law is something that we as community the wikipedia community would certainly benefit from greatly because wikipedia is a complicated issue and it's made exponentially more complicated um, by the fact that different countries have often very different laws when it comes to copyright. And mapping those differences uh, would help clarify things, uh, something that's already really complicated. So that's something I advocate for. Um, I see that we are, I think we are out of time, but I'm happy to go on and uh, let people stay out, whoever's interested. But I do sort of uh, want to let other people know that the rest of the Wikimania program is, is now going to proceed. Uh, but I, I will stay on and, and chat with anyone who wants to stay. Um, Joseph, oh, yeah, yeah. 